Hey guys, you're watching Halbon Flash Videos. I'm Arapa, and today we're talking to Sook from Earth Wallet. So Sook, welcome to our Flash Videos. Thanks for joining in today. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, very briefly, um, uh, your story to our audience so that we also get to know who we are talking to? Sure. Uh, my name is Sukhvir Sangera. I go by Sook. I'm from Toronto, uh, Canada. I started my career as, as an aerospace engineer. I was doing uh, computational fluid dynamics, researching like new energy systems, and then um, decided to mine Dogecoin on the side. And that ended up being more profitable than doing renewable energy research. So I kind of realized right. that the financial system was a little bit broken and decided to go and build software for the finance, traditional finance. I did uh, jobs for TD Securities, Deloitte, um, and then ventured into the crypto space in 2016. I helped build uh, Ledger X, uh, Polymath, I was a co-founder. And then um, I built a couple of DeFi protocols that bootstrapped to over a billion in market cap. And then I decided to start Earth Wallet as kind of a way to give back to the open source community and keep the, the future of this space in a direction that I kind of wanted it to go. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about the origin story of Earth Wallet. How did you come about founding this? I think after a while in crypto, you kind of get a little jaded seeing kind of behind the scenes of some of the actors in the space. And I think FTX and a lot of the crypto hacks, um, you know, those really highlight what the space has, has kind of been used for. You know, when you're a technologist, you know what's possible and what's not possible and what's kind of marketing driven and what's not. So yeah, I started EarthWall to kind of keep it true to what crypto is meant to be as like a new financial system rather than just copy and pasting what already exists. That's why we started it. It's self-custody, open source. It's fully bootstrapped. So it kind of just keep the space in the direction that I think it should go. I have used MetaMask, Phantom, a bunch of these other solutions out there. How different is Earth Wallet from all of this? The reason why we started a wallet is basically the, the space moves quick and changes quite a bit. So uh, we're the first Bitcoin ordinal wallet now that basically is feature complete against MetaMask. So um, we can basically do Wallet Connect, um, everything on Ethereum DeFi you can now do on Bitcoin and, and we're the first wallet to offer that. Also mobile friendly. And you talked about the self custody aspect of it. Everybody knows not your keys, not your coins. However, the impact of uh, you know self custody is sometimes still not very much understood by everybody. So what does that mean in the digital asset space? It's a tough one because, you know, I think intentionally a lot of the exchanges have more marketing power than the, the little uh, open source self-custody wallets. So, you know, we can't really make enough noise to educate people to get them to like self-custody their devices without maybe raising some VC capital. And then we have to like sell out our users, but, or sell the data kind of like Facebook, but we don't do that. So you know, we're trying to find good ways to educate people that you don't need exchanges. I think we do that by providing a really good user experience. So, you know, basically giving everybody the ability to do swaps and, you know, anything you can do on an exchange. I think we're at a, a point in the industry where you can basically do everything with your keys on your phone or on your computer and still be able to access all the features that you would on like a Binance or a Coinbase um, without giving up your keys. so. And what are the security risks that you see with uh, all these third-party solutions out there? Uh, there's two major ones. One is obviously the outright fraud or hacks, for, like the FTX scenarios, where they literally just take everyone's assets. Um, and then the second one, I think is kind of related, but you know, there's there's real like government censorship risks of like you know these guys kind of just going in and taking everyone's assets. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose whenever there's a single key that holds everyone's assets. Um, it makes the whole technological stack irrelevant. Um, so, and then we basically just get back to a central banking model with much less honorable actors, I'd say, at the top. A lot of these exchanges are unelected and, you know, they're kind of using not the greatest marketing techniques to, to get users. And so... Um, they're, they're not the people that you want in charge of the future of the financial system. Um, and so I think having everyone self custody and own their keys is the best defense mechanism to um, have the space move forward in the way that it should. So talk to us a bit about Earth DAO and what are the use cases you're handling around that? Yeah, so we haven't launched it yet. Um, so it's still um, kind of taking a backseat until 
we finish the audits on Earth Wallet. Um, right now, you know, that's why we're working with Hellborn Security, who's kind of the best in the space uh, from my experience. Um, and so once the audits are done, uh, we, we have a new protocol coming out that lets you stake your Ethereum for Earth. Um, it's a liquid staking protocol, like um, similar to Rocket Pool and Lido, where you, know, you can self custody stake your assets. It'll generate some, some returns. And rather than some of those returns going to you know, a for-profit company, we can actually scale um, EarthDAO, which is supposed to give back to, to impact initiatives. So we've partnered with some world leading organizations. I don't want to say too much because you know, we haven't launched it yet, but uh, it's coming pretty soon. Okay, great to hear that. So talk to us a bit more about the impact initiatives and considering the name is Earth Wallet, you probably have social impact as a key area of focus. So we would love to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, I think one of the greatest use cases of crypto is actually giving everyone on the planet the ability to vote uh, where kind of government spending can go or where like a global, you know, pool of assets can be spent. And I think that's never been possible before. So that's what kind of excites me about crypto is that if we're able to create this global voting system, that can actually solve climate change much better and much more trustlessly than what a lot of these like world governments that are trying to form and push on everyone and essentially like more of a top, rather than like a top down form of like taxing everybody on the planet for breathing there's this opportunity to create a new kind of bottom up grassroots approach where you know maybe it's just a matter of coordinating enough people who are interested in it and then you know kind of taking that approach so that's kind of the high level thesis on on where where we're approaching impact from there's still some work to be done uh, on our end and we will be kind of releasing that as as time comes on got it love that initiative and looking forward to all the updates around earth DAO. you also talked a bit about security so how is earth wallet handling its own security strategy and why choose to partner with halborn yeah so our security strategy is simplicity we don't over engineer things uh, we try to minimize lines of code this is kind of what i've learned even with computational fluid dynamics where I started, you really want to simplify, you know, if you're launching a rocket, NASA's lines of code were like, it was like a thousand lines of code to get to the moon. And every single line of code, the, you know, we used to take classes on this stuff, but every single line of code costs like a thousand dollars, basically like a hundred engineers analyzing every single line of code. So when you look at the developers that come into crypto or build self-custody wallets, a lot of them come from like, maybe like a Silicon Valley startup or like the, the best wallets like Phantom, MetaMask, all these guys, the core developers didn't have a smart contract like NASA level coding background. So they kind of just write a whole bunch of JavaScript code and they bloat the code base. And there's inherently going to be flaws in those code bases, maybe not now, maybe in the future. Um, but we approach it from how do we minimize our lines of code so that it's very simple and anyone can kind of audit it. And we have open source the Chrome wallet. We will be doing so for the mobile wallets once we finish our audits with Halborn. Um, and I think those two things, uh, kind of minimizing code base um, and also getting you know third-party reviews done, uh, kind of puts us ahead on a security front. All right. So you're taking the less is more approach with code base. So that's always great to hear from a depth's point of view as well. Um, thank you so much Suk, for talking to us today and telling us a little bit more about Earth Wallet, everything you're going um, up in the future and also the security strategy. Is there anything else you would like to share with our community about Earth Wallet? What's next coming up in the future? Yeah, we're going to be launching Earth Ether fairly soon. Um, also, if you haven't got a chance to check out Bitcoin Ordinals, there's a lot happening there. You can now basically do everything you could on Ethereum is now moving over to Bitcoin. So you can create NFTs, you can you know, connect to Bitcoin dApps. Uh, we're the first wallet to make it super easy for any developer to basically get involved in building on Bitcoin um, directly on Bitcoin. You know, we're not stacks. We don't have a layer two. There's no token involved. You can literally just start building on Bitcoin. Um, you can build your own marketplace or, or you know, token system, DeFi, whatever you want to do. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, please reach out. We're also always looking for good cybersecurity engineers. Um, so yeah, reach out. All right. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, looking forward to check out all the updates that you just mentioned.